Well, there's an ongoing investigation into that incident, so I can't really go into the details. But let me absolutely reassure everybody that the long-standing relationship that uh, the Ministry of Defence and uh, Gibraltar have had over literally hundreds of years. I'm a rural engineer by background, so Gibraltar is very much uh, a place that uh, I love, um, is, is undented by this. Uh, we are determined uh, to move forward and continue the incredibly positive cooperation that we've had for many years. Well, one of the pending issues is a transfer of the GDP to the Royal Gibraltar Police. Is this something that you discussed with Mr Picardo yesterday? We touched on it very briefly. I mean, you will appreciate that uh, there are, there's been a report, a very thorough report, um, over the GDP, there are 44 recommendations which I'm determined that we will now implement and my priority is to implement those recommendations and then I'm open to discussions with the government of Gibraltar about how we move, how we move forward from there. But my priority really is to get those recommendations implemented, uh, stabilise the force and then we can consider what happens next after that. So what were the main issues on the agenda in yesterday's meeting? Well, we talked about the uh, excitement of the Queen Elizabeth potentially coming uh, to Gibraltar in the near future. Uh, there's a few issues that we need to sort out, discussing whether or not uh, we would have to have a major infrastructure improvement here for that to happen on an enduring basis, but it's very early days. But I've no doubt that at some point uh, we will be seeing the Queen Elizabeth here in Gibraltar, and I think that will be a very exciting time both for Gibraltar and indeed the Royal Navy. Well, talking of the Royal Navy, great PR in terms of HMS Ocean. Yes, I mean, I've, I've talked to many people who uh, were involved in that frantic 72 hours or so when Ocean came in. And what a tremendous achievement to see uh, the military and the people of Gibraltar coming together to deliver uh, Ocean, then sailing across the Atlantic to support other overseas territories. I mean, absolutely underlines the strategic importance uh, that we place on Gibraltar and the utility and versatility uh, that, this, uh, uh, that this spot provides us. Normally when we talk of strategic importance, we tend to talk of Gibraltar as a naval base, but what about the Royal Gibraltar Regiment and its role within the British Army? I'm a soldier by background. I've uh, joined uh, the Gurkhas and the Royal Engineers when I was 18 and I still serve as a reserve. So I feel um, a, a great closeness um, to the Royal Gibraltar Regiment. Um, I'm looking very carefully at how we can get even greater utility uh, out of that unit. I think potentially the opportunity uh, to exercise and um, go on operations overseas is important. Young people join the military because that's just the sort of thing that they want to do. During his last visit, Defence Secretary Sir Michael Fallon said the rock would not be affected by defence cuts. Is that still the case? Well, there's an ongoing national security and capability review. I mean, I think the one thing that I would say is that my visit here is very timely. It's reminded me exactly of the uh, importance of Gibraltar uh, to UK defence, uh, and I'll be going back with that absolutely at the front of my mind. But the national security and capability review is ongoing. We haven't seen the, uh, the uh, outcomes of that. We probably won't see until the new year. Is the British government perhaps worried in any way that Brexit may see a change of role to the armed forces on the rock? Well, of course, Brexit is the great elephant in the room uh, at the moment. I'm very mindful uh, of how the people of Gibraltar voted uh, uh, in that referendum. Um, I personally, I'm very confident that uh, uh, Brexit should be a win-win, both for the United Kingdom, Gibraltar, and indeed the European Union. It's absolutely right that we should consider all the outcomes, but I'm genuinely confident that post-Brexit uh, Gibraltar will continue to go from strength to strength and indeed the MOD presence here on the rock. Well Brexit isn't the only elephant in the room for the British government at the moment. What effect has the resignation of Sir Michael Fallon and the appointment of Gavin Williamson had on the British government perhaps in general and your ministry in particular? Well I know them both. I mean I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to Sir Michael Fallon. He was a tremendous Secretary of State for Defence and I must say a tremendous boss. He really did achieve an enormous amount in his four years uh, of leadership at the top of the MOD. Um, but all periods of political leadership um, come to an end. Uh, Gavin Williamson is a very close friend of mine. He absolutely shares my passion for defence. We've had two very good first meetings and I'm convinced that the MOD will continue uh, to go from strength to strength under his leadership.